Hello there. We're going to talk about solving quadratic equations with the square root method and with the quadratic formula. And our answers by and large are going to be irrational. You'll find out what that means also. So let's get rid of this and get started. The square root method works like this. You have a quadratic term and you have a constant term, but there is no linear term. That is, there is no x to the one power term, okay? That's when you use the square root method. So, I'm going to add 28 to both sides of this equation. Plus 28, plus 28. That will leave me with 4x squared equals <clears throat> 28. Now, the 4 and the x squared are two separate entities. We have 4 times x squared. So I want to isolate the x squared. I'll divide 4 on both sides. Here, the 4s cancel over here. 28 divided by 4 is 7. So we're going to have x squared equals 7. Now nobody cares what x squared equals. What we want to know is what does x equal? So I have to take the square root of x squared to get x, but I have to do the same thing to both sides of the equation. So I'll have equals plus or minus the square root of x. Oops, plus or minus the square root of seven rather. Now let's talk about this. All positive real numbers have two square roots, a positive square root and a negative square root. You would have learned that in an earlier class, although not a lot of attention is paid to it. But we're paying attention now. OK, so this is a way of acknowledging the truth of that situation. Our answers are going to be, our solutions are going to be, x equals, well, let's, go, let's start here, positive or minus the square root of 7. Okay, because 7 has two square roots, a positive square root and a negative square root. Let's look. The square root of 7, if I square it, equals 7. That's how I know that the square root of 7 is the positive square root of 7. Now, negative, the square root of 7 squared, equals, well, a negative is like negative 1, and negative 1 squared is positive 1. The square root of 7 squared is 7, and 1 times 7 is 7. Therefore, x has two square roots. That is, 7 has two square roots, a positive square root and a negative square root. So my answer box in my math lab should read something like this x equals, and then you have the answer box. 
negative the square root of seven and positive the square root of seven. That was fun, let's do it again. I have four X squared equals eight this time. Again, I can divide out the four. Four over four is one, so they cancel. And I'll have X squared equals eight divided by four is two. Now I take the square root of both sides of the equation and I put a plus or minus on the outside of the radical of the number, of the constant. The square root of x squared is x equals negative the square root of 2 and positive the square root of 2. And that's what will go in your answer box. I know that may be something of a surprise to you, but that's just the way we do the square root method for the reasons I already stated, that every positive real number has two square roots, a positive square root, which is also called the principal square root and a negative square root. So we have to take care of both of them. Now let's move on. We're going to be solving quadratic equations by using the quadratic formula right here. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2a. So let's go here. You know that, or if you don't know, I'm going to tell you now. The formula for a quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus C equals zero. So this is not that. You have a quadratic term and a constant term equals a linear term. <clears throat> I have to make that into a zero. And I'll do that by subtracting 96z from both sides of the equation. All right, so 16z squared minus 96z plus 142 equals zero. Now the first step is always to see if there's um, a GCF, a greatest common factor of all three terms. Well, I know that two will go into all three terms. Um, what about four? Maybe even 16, let's see. Okay, 16 divided by two is eight. I already know that. How about 96? 96 divided by two is 48. All right, so right now, two times eight Z squared minus 48 times two times Z plus 71 times two equals zero. 
let's pull the two out as the GCF and study what we've got left. Two times. 8z squared minus 48z plus 71 equals zero. Now there is a great thing about GCFs when you're working with an equation, especially an equation equal to zero. Because remember, when you've got an equation, you can do anything you want, as long as you do it to both sides of the equation. Well, I want to divide by two. Divide by two on both sides of the equation. 2 divided by 2 cancels, leaving me with 8z squared minus 48z plus 71. And that's going to equal 0 divided by 2, which is 0. You can try that on your calculator and you'll see. 0 divided by 2 is 0. No error message. The other way around would be a disaster. 2 divided by 0. Hello? That was my friendly mailman. Up, uh, letter carrier. All right, two divided by zero gives you an error message, but zero divided by two just gives you zero. Okay. Now, A is eight, B is negative 48, And C is positive 71. And we're going to use the quadratic formula. How do I know? How do I know I can't factor? Well, see, I already looked at the answers. Whenever you have square roots in the answer, you cannot factor. But you can try. You can multiply A times C and then try to find two factors that will add up to negative 48, and it won't work. You won't be able to find them. So go ahead and give it a try. I dare you. Okay. So here we go. Z. Wait a minute, I have to arrange things here. There we go. Z equals <clears throat> negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right, well, that's going to equal negative b and b is negative 48 plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is parentheses, negative 48 squared minus four times a times c. all over 2a. How about that? Now, the first thing I usually do is I take what's underneath the radical 
A radical sign is a root sign. And what's underneath is called the radicand. Right here. Let me put an arrow. Radicand. Radicand. Ends in a D. The radicand. That is nothing but a smudge. OK, so I'm going to come over here. Parentheses, negative 48, parentheses closed, squared, minus 4 times 8 times 71. Enter. I've got 32. Now, let's look at what would happen if I had not put parentheses around negative 48. Negative 48 squared minus 4 times 8 times 71. Negative 5, 4,576. That's so wrong. Okay. My point is made. Now, I put that in and I remember it was 32. So now, that means Z is going to equal negative, negative 48, which is positive 48, plus or minus the square root of 32 over 2 times 8, which is 16. Sixteen. No, do not divide 16 into 32. Instead, we're going to do this. We have to reduce or simplify the radicand. So 48 plus or minus the square root of 16 times 2 over 16 equals 48 plus or minus the square root of 16 times the square root of 2 over 16. Go back over here. I'd rather not have this run on to the next page. I'd rather not. 48 plus or minus. The square root of 16 is 4. So that's 4 times the square root of 2. Over 16. Now let me point something out, namely that 48 is 4 times 12. So we have 4 times 12 plus or minus 4 times the square root of 2. The numerator has a GCF. I'm going to pull it out to the front. 12 plus or minus the square root of 2 over 16, which is 4 times 4. Well, OK, the 4s cancel, leaving me with 
12 plus or minus the square root of 2 over 4, which is the more normal way to write this, but notice that that's not what the authors did. So we can we can let them we can let them get away with it. And here's what they're doing. They're saying 12 over 4 plus or minus the square root of 2 over 4. 4 goes into 12 three times. So their answer is 3 plus or minus the square root of 2 over 4. And no, you cannot divide the two into the four because a number under a radical cannot talk to, for lack of a better term, cannot communicate with a number that's not under the radical. So that's our answer. Or if I had room, I'd write the answer the way they did, three, plus the square root of two over four, comma, three minus the square root of two over four. My cat gets so mad when I talk to my computer instead of her. Now you might be wondering what the heck is going on here. Let's do some more and you'll see. Here we have a quadratic equation set equal to one. So let's pull the one over so we can make it set equal to zero. That's going to give us 2x squared minus 13x minus 1 equals 0. So now I can write the formula for all quadratic equations. So I can see that A is 2, B is negative 13, and C is negative 1. So I'm going to write X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So negative b is going to be negative, negative 13, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is negative 13 squared, minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. OK, let's see how much room we have. Oh, the whole page. OK. So X equals negative negative 13, which is positive 13 plus or minus. Let's see, we can do this by hand. 13 squared is 169. 
negative 13 times negative 13 is positive 169. Minus 4 times 2 is 8 times negative 1 will make minus 4 times minus 1 or negative 1, that'll be plus 8. Over 2 times A. And 8 is A, rather, A is 2. Two times two is four. All right, X equals 13 plus or minus the square root of 177 over four. And look, this is their answer. Four won't go into 13. So why bother to put 13 over 4? And the square root of 177 will not break down. It doesn't contain a perfect square. So you gain nothing in particular from writing this as two separate fractions. In fact, this is considered to be the best way, the most simple way to write this not doing what the writers of the book or the people who programmed the answers, not doing what they did up here, but writing it as one fraction and one fraction. That's much more simple. So we have simplified and we've simplified completely. There's your answer right there. And writing it as two separate answers. That would be 13. Well, I like to put the minus first and there's a reason. 177 over four, it doesn't matter. 13 plus the square root of 177 over four. And that goes in the answer box. In my math lab. None of these are easy. I admit that. They're challenging. But that's what college algebra is all about. It's growing. Dealing with all those challenges. All right. Here is a quadratic equation set in the right um, order and, and according to the formula. A x squared plus B x uh, plus C equals zero. So that A is going to be one, B is six, and C is negative six. So here we go. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four AC. Oh, all over two A. Sounds better in the shower. Need a drink of coffee. OK, X equals. Negative six. Plus or minus the square root. Of six squared minus four times one times negative six. All over two times one. 
OK, notice I didn't put six in parentheses. That's because it's positive. There's not a lot of danger in squaring a positive number. And your calculator will know what to do with it. But the problem is the calculator. If you're going to be calculating in the calculator and you have a negative B, then you have to put parentheses around it before you square it. OK, just keep that in mind. But we have a positive B, so there's no reason for parentheses. Also, the numbers are fairly small. Negative six plus or minus the square root of 36, six squared is 36. Negative four or minus four times one is minus four times negative six is plus 24. And then I pull the top of my radical on out to cover everything that should be under the radical. Now, OK, over 2 times 1 is 2. Negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 6 plus 4 is 10, carry the 1. 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 2 is 6, over 2. Now, just like with fractions, whenever you have a number under the radical, you have to be aware of whether or not you have to simplify it. You do have to try. And this time you can do it. How do you know? Well, you break down 60 and you find out if it's got a perfect square as one of its factors. Negative six plus or minus the square root of 60. Let's take 60 apart. 60 equals 1 times 60, 2 times 30, 3 times 20, 4 times 15. And five times 12. And six times 10. And then the numbers start turning around. Um, here, we have the factorization I want. Four times 15. 15 equals 3 times 5. Neither of those numbers is a perfect square. So 4 is the largest perfect square inside 60. So I come over here and write 4 times 15. All over 2. Equals negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 4 times the square root of 15 over 2. And that equals negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 4 is 2, 2 times the square root of 15 over 2. Now, don't be in a hurry to cancel. You can only cancel after you pull out a GCF. And 
since six equals three times two, you have a two in both terms in the numerator. So an equivalent way to write this is two times negative three plus or minus the square root of 15 over two. The twos cancel, leaving you with x equals negative three plus or minus the square root of 15, which when you split that apart into two separate numbers, you're going to have x equals negative three minus the square root of 15, comma, negative three plus the square root of 15. And then you draw. Your answer box. And that's the answer. We'll accept. There. Now I set these up knowing that all of the answers were going to be irrational. <clears throat> Here's what irrational means. You already know this, we've talked about it. Irrational means cannot be made into a fraction. Now, an example of trying to put, make something into a fraction is the square root of 79. If I come over here and I take the square root of 79 and hit enter, I get a decimal. Now I'm going to try to turn that into a fraction by clicking on math, and then frac, and then enter, and it doesn't happen. Why? Because the square root of 79 cannot be made into a fraction. That's why. Can anything under a radical ever be made into a fraction? Yes. How about 25 divided by 16? I'm going to math frac that. Math, frac, enter. Oh, I made a mistake. I'm going to show you what the mistake was. It's very educational. Second x squared, 25 divided by 16. You know what I didn't do? Look how frac is underneath the radical there. That's why I got an error message. I have to come over here and click the right arrow a button so that I come to the end of the radical, then I can click on math, frac, enter. And there's my answer. We made the square root of 25 over 16 into the fraction 5 fourths. That means the square root of 25 over 16 is rational but the square root of 79 is irrational. Most of the time, <clears throat> for what you're doing, irrational numbers <clears throat> are going to be square roots of numbers like 79. Okay, now let's do this and pretend we don't know the answer. I'm going to subtract five from both sides of this equation so that I get six x squared 
plus 14x minus 5 equals 0. Well, we could try, and this is what I mean by trying and seeing if, uh, if you can factor this. If I can multiply 6 times negative 5 and get negative 30, and then try to find a pair of factors that will add up to 14, then this is factorable. Let's see. Negative 30 equals negative 1 times 30. Negative 2 times 15. Negative 3 times 10. Negative 4, no. Negative 5 times 6. And 1 times negative 30. 2 times negative 15, 3 times negative 10, and 5 times negative 6. None of these add up to positive 14. Negative 2 plus positive 15 will give you positive 13, but not positive 14. So it's useless. Oh, and by the way, we do not have a GCF for all three terms. So I won't be pulling out a GCF either. Instead, we're going to let A equal 6, B equal 14, and C equal negative 5. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. x equals negative 14 plus or minus the square root of 14 squared minus 4 times 6 times negative 5 all over 2 times 6. Oh, well, that's kind of ugly, isn't it? All right. So 14 squared minus 4 times 6 times negative 5. Enter. It's 316 equals negative 14 plus or minus the square root of 316 over 12. Now I'm going to have to break down 316 to see if there's a perfect square in it. I'm going to let the calculator help. In fact, I'm going to, no, nah, I'm not, that's too much trouble. So 316 divided by 2 equals 158 divided by 2 equals 79. Now, 2 times 2 is 4. Let's divide 316 by 4. 316 Div uh, uh not times. I back up and I overwrite it with a division. Divided by 4 is 79. So 316 equals 4 times 70.
9. So that's what I'm going to write. I'm going to come over here and say negative 14 plus or minus the square root of 4 times 79 over 12. And starting back here, x equals negative 14 plus or minus the square root of 4 times the square root of 79 all that good stuff over 12. The square root of 4 is 2. So, negative 14 equals negative 7 times 2, plus or minus 2 times the square root of 79 over 12. I have a GCF here. So I'm going to pull out 2 as a greatest common factor. Negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 79 over 12, which is 2 times 6 so the twos cancel. That's the only really safe way to cancel. Now the answer I'm left with is negative seven plus or minus the square root of 79 over six. Let's see if they agree. Yes, I am delighted. Okay, so what do I know here? X equals, X equals negative seven minus the square root of 79 over six, comma, negative seven plus the square root of 79 over six. Not all that hard. 